Hiya. Well, while many Russians are now choosing to spend time and isolate in their dachas rather than uh, spending time in their apartments, we decided to give you the lowdown and the basics. Most people get to their dachas in their private cars. It's also possible to use buses or trains. Uh, again, a wonderful option. On our way to the dacha, we Russians love to dream about all of the wonderful things that we will finally get up to once we get there. Like cook a delicious meal outside, uh, a sort of barbecue. We call this shashliki. We use skewers like this to put bits of meat on them and then let them sizzle on a warm coal like this. It's a bit like a kebab, shashliki. We see ourselves meditating in the garden, taking in the wonderful sounds of nature surrounding us. We imagine evenings of storytelling out by a grand fire like this one. In reality though, we spend 90% of our time cleaning, sorting, getting rid of stuff we don't need here anymore, just making sure this space generally functions. But this also is in the DNA of our Dacia experience that we Russians love so dearly. First off, Dachas are seen more as summer houses that you would visit during the warmer times and warmer um, periods of uh, weather in Russia. And uh, these were sort of plots of land that were allocated by the Soviet government to the Soviet population so that they would grow their own food and provide for themselves. So it's not something that is only for the Russian rich. Nearly everyone here has a second home, a dacha. And a country house is obviously, just like anywhere else, uh, a gorgeous, often expensive building that has all of the amenities and is in a usually guarded territory. We have those too, but those are not dachas by far. Uh, right now, although these summer houses have massively transformed, most of the people of course made sure that you can spend time at a dacha during winter as well, they're still seen as uh, a second home. So much simpler, um, not that fussy. Some of them are still more like a cabin and you wouldn't even have amenities inside. You'd have to go and use the loo outside and just enjoy a very simple uh, rural lifestyle. What you see behind me here is the heart of any traditional Russian home. It's a wood burner and it's called the Russian Pechka. It's a Russian wood burner. Let me show it to you in all glory. You can see that it goes from floor to ceiling and it's very large. I'm going to show you how it works um, and why it's so amazing and why these things uh, can allow you to spend times in a simple wooden cabin like this, even in minus centigrade degrees temperatures like right now. So, can you see me? Um, yeah, in order to make it work, the wood goes in here. You open this little bit for suction, and then, yeah, you pile smaller chips with larger wooden um, pieces and paper inside, and then burn enough for all of this to get warm. And then essentially, you kind of close it. There's a mechanism just up there. Let me show it to you. There it is, that one. It's closed right now. Um, you can't use it when it's closed. You have to open it. And then once you close that and you close that and everything's burnt, um, it will release heat for hours on end and keep the whole house warm. Now, when I say the whole house, I mean it. We're now going to move into the other room of this house which is the bedroom and here you can see the same construction on the other side of the wall so the wood burner would be able to heat up two rooms simultaneously because all of this is where the heat will um, will generate first and then slowly um, release so it's way more practical than using a fireplace for example 
it stores heat for longer and you have to use less wood so it's super practical and very traditional i suppose when you look at traditional images of russian um, houses they're usually white they're kind of whitewashed but we kept ours in this beautiful red brick and um it's 20 years now 20 years old and it functions perfectly well so um, i'm very pleased with it This is our library. I've said it before and I'll say it again as much as needed. I love books, books are my best friends and my favorite pastime. So yeah, we have very poor internet connection here and no television set. So this is our main source of entertainment at the Vecha, which is awesome. A very important part of our dacha existence is what we wear here, our dacha wardrobe. Um, it's usually absolutely ridiculous and everyone has it. A lot of the stuff was discarded because of stains, uh, but I also happen to own quite a few things that are actually quite nice. Some of them never really fit, some of them were just weird and never suited my wardrobe. And then there are others which were just plain uh, crazy, bought for events, etc. So I'm going to share with you what I've accumulated throughout the years and try and show what the Dutch style Russian way looks like. Now, I promised I'd show you this Daichi essential, uh, the compost. This is where we basically create fertilizer out of everything we eat and use it later to, well, um, help all of the things that we grow here in our garden grow. Um, it's the compost. <laughs> and there it is. We've got three. Uh, Hello tree, I'm hugging, the tree's hugging me right now, which is weird, but wonderful as well. So yeah, we've got three, because you have to let a compost sit for a year or two um, to make sure that it actually turns all the muck into a fertilizer. And how does that happen? Well, I keep this in the kitchen and all food scraps like potato peels, onion peels, and other stuff. Yeah, that looks pretty disgusting right now. There's tea, dead roses. <laughs> that goes into the compost and sits there until it turns into very rich soil. I'm going to dispose of this. This is the entrance to our traditional Russian banya. Come on in, I'll show you around. This place is absolutely awesome. Uh, it heats up to 90 degrees centigrade and you can survive in these kind of climbs, I assure you. So uh, it's different from a Finnish sauna in that respect because it's much warmer, I suppose, and it's not dry. We actually like to use steam, but much more of it and in warmer temperatures than a Turkish bath. So this is what it looks like. Um, this is where you'd sit, and if you sit on a lower bench, it's not as hot here, but obviously as the steam rises and the warmer temperatures rise, when you go up there, it gets pretty warm. This is a wooden pillow, because you don't want to lie on anything that's wet and soggy. Um, and yeah, you probably just lie down here and Oh, enjoy the cleansing process. What I'm wearing right now is a felt hat. You wear these to protect your hair. And how do we heat it up? Well, <laughs> there's another wood burner, believe it or not. Here it is. Um, this is modern, I suppose. Um, 
and we've got rocks on top. That's where you'd pour the water out of this basin over here with essential oils. And the steam would come. And as we Russians say, cleanse your body and soul. Um, yeah, so that's that. This is how we check the time to make sure that we don't spend too much time inside and we don't get ill. And this shows the temperature. It's pretty cold right now, as you can tell, I'm wearing a woolen cardi. This is a little bonus video to show you how we keep our wood outside. This wood is the wood that goes into the wood burner. Bye!